British royals have a long history of illegitimate children, many of whom were openly acknowledged. But what about those who were kept a secret? Could it be true that Prince Harry is not actually the king's son? Henry VIII is arguably the most infamous British monarch. Besides the sordid drama of his six wives, two of whom were beheaded at his order, Henry also upended his realm's religious beliefs for personal reasons. He broke from the Catholic Church and formed the Church of England when the Pope refused to annul his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon. Henry openly acknowledged one illegitimate son, a boy who came to be known as Henry Fitzroy. The son of courtier Elizabeth Blount, young Henry was sometimes seen as a bit of a blessing, as he confirmed that the king was capable of producing a son in the years-long quest for a legitimate royal heir. The dramatic turn of events has been portrayed in numerous plays, films, and TV shows. I have a son! Ha <laughs> ha! I have a son, God! Can you hear me? But Fitzroy was out of the line of succession, leaving Henry to go through wives in an attempt to produce a son who could take the throne. However, tales abound that the king didn't stop at Bessie Blount when it came to fathering children out of wedlock. Unproven rumors maintain that he was the biological father of former mistress Mary Boleyn's children, Henry and Catherine Carey. Awkwardly enough, Mary was the sister of Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn. Rumors also claimed a number of other people were supposedly children of Henry VIII, including Thomas Stukeley, who rebelled against the king's daughter, Queen Elizabeth I, but nothing has ever been proven. The 12th century English ruler Henry I could have the most illegitimate children of all British monarchs. According to historians, he had more than 20 acknowledged illegitimate children, who sometimes proved to be useful allies when given decent titles, strategic posts, and key marriages. He only ever produced one legitimate daughter, Empress Matilda, who tried and failed to claim the throne in the wake of her father's death. However, it's not always obvious who was fathered by Henry I and with what consorts. For instance, some have argued that he was the father of the children of a Welsh princess named Nesta. These and other purported children could have been the result of wishful thinking, however. As for political reasons, some may have wanted there to be a more clear connection between the king and other figures in the realm. Still, given his pattern of behavior, it's reasonable to think that there were more than 20 little Henrys toddling about the kingdom as wake. Queen Elizabeth II's sister, Princess Margaret, proved herself to be something of a wild child early on, as she didn't always behave like the buttoned-up royals around her. She wasn't afraid to spend money like it was going out of style, drank and smoked profusely, and was notorious for sharp and often biting wit. Margaret also reportedly attracted the attention of famous would-be lovers, from Mick Jagger to Pablo Picasso, though few of her rumored romantic exploits have been proven. There is also one especially salacious rumor regarding Margaret's children. No, not her children David Armstrong Jones and Lady Sarah Chato, whom she had with ex-husband Anthony Armstrong Jones. Robert Brown claims that he is actually the oldest child of Princess Margaret, conceived with RAF officer and Margaret's former paramour, Group Captain Peter Townsend. Supposedly, Townsend's divorce status is what kept them from getting married. Brown believes he was born to the pair in 1955, but was raised by Cynthia and Douglas Brown instead to save the royal family from scandal. Brown has brought his case before Britain's courts, claiming that the information proving his true familial relations is in the sealed royal wills. However, so far, his efforts have proven futile. It took me ages to do anything about it because my, my rational side that said that's nuts. As the younger brother of Kings Edward VIII and George VI, then uncle to Elizabeth II, Prince George, Duke of Kent, was close to the highest echelons of royal power and a fixture of the British social circuit. He was also apparently quite scandalous, not only allegedly carrying on affairs with men and women, but purportedly acquiring and then kicking a drug habit. George also served in the Royal Navy, worked in the Foreign and Home Offices, and started serving in the Royal Air Force just a few years before World War II. It all came to an abrupt end on August 25, 1942, when the 39-year-old George died in an airplane crash, which has led to all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories. There are some people who maintain, even to this day, that the crash was no accident. The Duke's glamorous, sometimes sordid lifestyle also generated many wild rumors, including at least two different stories of secret children. Some claim that he was the father of American diplomat Michael Temple Canfield, whose alleged mother was American socialite Kiki Preston. Canfield married Lee Bouvier, sister of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, though their marriage was later unknown. Perhaps even more colorful is the rumor that the Duke of Kent fathered a child with the famous romance novelist Dame Barbara Hartland. She reportedly claimed to have had an encounter with the 25-year-old Duke that produced her daughter, Rain. Rain went on to become a socialite and, more notoriously, the stepmother of Diana, Princess of Wales. Though William IV never produced a living, legitimate heir, paving the way for his niece Victoria to take the throne when he died in 1837, he definitely had the ability to produce children. 
After a youth spent romancing pretty ladies and generally carousing about, he kind of settled down with actor Dorothea Jordan in 1790. Over the course of their roughly 20-year relationship, the two never officially married because of her status as a commoner. Still, that wasn't much of an impediment to the pair who ultimately had 10 children together. William eventually dumped her to seek out a legitimate wife. William IV commissioned a statue of Jordan in 1831, but seeing as how she died destitute in 1816, it was a pretty empty gesture that probably didn't put the king's wife Adelaide in a happy state of mind. As for the children produced via his legitimate marriage, William and Adelaide's five children all tragically died, either at birth or within only a few months. Being the current monarch of the United Kingdom doesn't offer much protection from scandal, as King Charles III can tell you. The public failure of his marriage to Diana, Princess of Wales, was tabloid fodder for decades, as is his marriage to Queen Consort Camilla Parker Bowles, who he wed in 2005. But one man, Simon Charles Durante Day, claims that he is the secret love child of Charles and Camilla, conceived long before the two had settled into married life. According to Durante Day, he is the product of a 1965 union between a teenage Charles and Camilla. He states that Camilla is absent from the public record for enough time to have concealed a pregnancy and claims to remember meeting with a mysterious woman who looked like Camilla. And he told the Australian tabloid New Idea that his grandmother told him on her deathbed that he was the pair's child. And it had a picture of Charles and Camilla on it. And I said to her, is it these two? And I pointed to them and she said, yeah. Durante Day hasn't produced any evidence to back up his claims, and the king isn't agreeing to a DNA test with someone who may just be a random pretender. Moreover, the timeline doesn't add up, as Charles and Camilla reportedly didn't meet until 1970. By the 1980s, it was painfully clear to many observers that the marriage of Princess Diana and Prince Charles was all but over. The pair had only been married since July 1981 and had their first child nearly a year later, but by 1986, it appears that both Charles and Diana had stepped out on their marriage. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Charles had gotten back into a relationship with former flame Camilla Parker Bowles, while Diana turned to army captain and horse riding teacher James Hewitt. The increasingly unhappy royal couple finally separated in late 1992 and officially divorced in 1996. By that point, Diana's affair with Hewitt had been over for at least four years, but their brief relationship would come back to haunt Diana's legacy even after her sudden death in a 1997 car accident. It wasn't just that Hewitt garnered widespread boos for trying to sell Diana's love letters in the early 2000s. There was also the matter of Prince Harry, whom some onlookers began to claim bore a striking resemblance to the ginger-haired Hewitt. Harry even wrote in his 2023 memoir, Spare, that Charles would occasionally make hurtful jokes that he might not be Harry's real father. But there's no proof, and it falls apart when you simply look at the dates. Prince Harry was born nearly two years before Diana and Hewitt met, and Hewitt has flatly denied he's the father. No, I'm not. Richard III had multiple illegitimate children. His eldest known son, typically referred to as John of Gloucester, was made a captain and perhaps even knighted in September 1483. Records are unclear. However, John of Gloucester is specifically referred to in one instance as the king's base son, while a later grant written in Richard's voice speaks of our dear bastard son. Not long after, an illegitimate daughter, Catherine Plantagenet, pops up in documents, though it's not clear exactly how old she was at the time. The Richard III doesn't appear to have produced any more illegitimate children after his marriage to Anne Neville in 1472, there remains one more possible child that came into being before their union. Often referred to as Richard Plantagenet, or sometimes Richard of Eastwell, the only record that appears to refer to him is a simple line noting his 1515 burial in Eastwell. Legend has it Richard III acknowledged him just before his own doom at the Battle of Botsworth, and that Richard of Eastwell lived out his life as a simple stonemason. However, fascinating as such a rumor may be, no one's found definitive proof that Richard of Eastwell was Richard III's son. Few British monarchs have been as downright hedonistic as Charles II. Maybe you can't blame him. His father, Charles I, was beheaded on the order of fun-hating rebel leader Oliver Cromwell. In 1660, the monarchy was reinstated, and Charles II was crowned at the age of 30. He also took a politically convenient wife, Catherine, but it is clear that his passion was reserved for his multiple mistresses. Charles had 14 known illegitimate children with seven different mistresses, though he failed to produce a legitimate heir with his wife. The throne went to the king's brother, James II, upon Charles's death in 1685. One legend claims that there was yet another son named James de la Cloche, who was said to have been conceived when the king was only a teenager. His parentage was supposedly only revealed after Charles II's death. Odd indeed for a man who readily gave his other natural children titles. James de la Cloche also reportedly became a Jesuit priest and may even have been the famous man in the Iron Mask. 
Too bad no one's been able to prove anything about this alleged child of the king, who may have simply been played by one or more imposters just looking for a good payout. Like so many other British kings, James II wasn't too worried about monogamy. He produced children with multiple mistresses. Meanwhile, his Catholic faith made enough people nervous that he was forced off the throne in favor of his legitimate Protestant daughter, Mary. The bevy of James's proven illegitimate children isn't terribly exciting compared to other rulers. What is interesting, however, are the tales of Jane Stuart, a Quaker woman who was supposedly born in Paris in 1654, while the future king was in exile from the anti-monarchist government of Oliver Cromwell. As the story goes, she was a lady-in-waiting for the queen. The rest of her life reads like a soap opera, with a tragically killed lover, a period of poverty, and persecution for her newfound Quaker beliefs. It's said that she eventually became a simple laborer in the English countryside, who couldn't help but leave some clues as to her origins, like the ability to read the Bible in Greek. Alas, there's basically no proof, as all of these stories emerged as oral legend after her death. Unbelievably, it was once proposed that none other than Queen Victoria was a product of extramarital hanky-panky. As rumor would have it, her mother, Princess Victoria of saxe coburg zaufeld supposedly had an affair with Irish military officer John Conroy. He was assigned to the household of Edward, Duke of Kent, the future queen's ostensible father. Some claim that Conroy and the elder Victoria were a bit too close for comfort. Conroy reportedly acted pretty familiarly with the princess and her daughter and attempted to isolate them and gain control after it became clear that the younger Victoria was set to be queen. Or was that all just malicious gossip? Then again, young Victoria herself vaguely admitted to an untoward closeness between her mother and Conroy, while onlookers like the Duke of Wellington couldn't help but speculate. Modern historian Ann Wilson added fuel to the fire by claiming that Conroy was the source of the hemophilia gene that plagued some of Queen Victoria's descendants. But Wilson has also admitted that medical evidence is shaky, as hemophilia could have arisen without genetic interference from Conroy. Could George III, who famously saw the loss of valuable overseas colonies in the American Revolution and suffered from debilitating bouts of mental instability, have secret children too? In 1993, archivist father Robert Caroon confidently told the New York Times that George III had four children with a mistress named Anna Lightfoot. Caroon even claimed to have met a probable descendant who had an uncanny resemblance to the long-dead king. Genealogist Anthony J. Camp notes that Hannah Lightfoot appears to have been a real Quaker woman, and there were contemporary rumors of a mysterious fair Quaker in the king's company. One woman, Lavinia Reeves, even claimed that the king had married Lightfoot years earlier and so invalidated his marriage to Queen Charlotte. That would have made their 15 children, including King George IV and King William IV, illegitimate. However, there's no real evidence connecting Lightfoot and George III. It doesn't help that, at the time he would have supposedly met her, George was a notoriously shy young man who lived in the shadow of his powerful bickering family. Moreover, Lavinia and her mother, Olive Saris, presented more compelling evidence that they were con artists than long-lost relatives. Edward IV is often left in the long shadow of his brother, Richard III. Still, King Edward IV, who died in 1483, has his own colorful story that includes a tangled web of dalliances. In fact, the rumors of illegitimacy date back to before Edward's birth, when gossip that appears to have originated in France claims that Edward's mother had a dalliance with a lowly archer that produced Edward. Therefore, the story maintained, Edward was just some guy's son and not the rightful heir to the throne. However, it could well be just talk put forward by Edward's political rivals. What's trickier to pass by is a rumor that Edward quietly wed Eleanor Talbot in June 1461. If this was even true, they don't appear to have had children together, though later political troublemakers used this supposed relationship to try and invalidate the king's marriage to Elizabeth Woodville. Edward may have also gotten romantically involved with Eleanor's cousin, Henry Beaufort, Duke of Somerset. As if one secret marriage wasn't enough, later commentators claim that Edward had another hush-hush marriage to Elizabeth Lucy, along with a long-running romantic liaison with Jane Shore. Only there isn't actual evidence supporting a marriage to either. Likewise, while rumor mongers in many eras claim that Edward produced heaps of illegitimate kids, he only ever acknowledged three. Being a daughter of George III was a tough deal, as proven by the challenges faced by Princess Sophia, the fifth daughter of George III and Queen Charlotte. She spent much of her life blandly hanging around the royal family and never marrying, but rumors of an illegitimate son dogged her from the earliest years of the 19th century. The rumor mill claimed that Princess Sophia had a son with military officer and royal aide Major General Thomas Garth in 1800 or perhaps late 1799. Some even went so far as to claim that the two, who appear to have grown close in the 1790s, were married after a fashion, though it couldn't have been legal due to the Royal Marriages Act that restricted Sophia's official husband candidates. But Garth does appear to have raised a rather mysterious boy named Tommy, 
who not only became the elder Garth's heir, but took on a similar military career of his own. Like so many tales of royal illegitimate children, and perhaps especially those born to unmarried princesses, no one's ever produced incontrovertible proof that Princess Sophia really gave birth to Major General Garth's adopted heir. As much as Queen Victoria may have wanted to uphold an image as a doting wife and loving mother, the reality is that her family had quite a few scandalous members, starting with her heir, who earned the nicknames of Playboy Prince and Dirty Birdie before he became Edward VII. Victoria probably also lost sleep over her daughter Louise, who grew up to be a popular artist and feminist. That wasn't so bad, but the rumors that she had secretly carried an illegitimate child likely didn't ease her oftentimes conservative mother's mind. Supposedly, the princess conceived a child in the 1860s with her brother Leopold's tutor, a man named Walter Sterling. As historian Lucinda Hawksley told today, Sterling lasted a mere four months with the royal family, but was given a regular payout even after he was fired. Around the same time, a boy named Henry was born and swiftly adopted into the family of someone very close to the queen, royal obstetrician Sir Charles Locock. Henry's descendants claim a physical resemblance to Victoria's family, but DNA tests haven't happened yet to provide clear evidence either way. And as Hawksley told the CBC, Louise's documents in the Royal Archives are closed, hinting that there may be something in there that could illuminate the rumors.